All right. Hey, Savvy, how you doing? I'm doing great, all things considered. <laughs> Still dealing with inflation. <laughs> Is that a sound okay? Yeah, you sound great. Okay, great. Let me get a little closer to the thing then. Okay, let's get closer. Closer <laughs> than close. That's an old song, huh? <laughs> I'm All right, guys. Older. I'm way older than you, right, Sabby? I'm older than you, right? I'm about 20 years older than you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know older music, though, because my parents, they used to always play. Like, they still listen to, like, they don't really like new music. Well, there's a lot of music f from the 80s that could be, you. if you release it today, you wouldn't know. You know, like of all of Prince's stuff, obviously, that that's like age ageless, right? Yeah, Prince, Led Zeppelin, The Beatles. So many people have sampled and copied The Beatles. There's a lot. I heard, with music. I heard that. Um, the, who was that guy who was the bassist for uh, the uh, the grunge guy? I know I'm, I can't remember anyone's name. The grunge guy, <laughs> Kurt Cobain. <laughs> Kurt Cobain. Uh, he said he took a lot of his uh, bass ribs from uh, the Gap Band. Do you ever heard of the Gap Band? My parents listened to them. Yes. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's interesting. So interesting. When, I, when I was younger, I used to, so when I was in high school and college, I always looked, I listened to black music. That's, you know, everybody was into Led Zeppelin and the Rush at that time was a big band. And I just like, I hated that shit. And I was always <laughs> listening to, you know, Teddy Pendergrass, and Luther Vandross, and that's when they started to do uh, hot mixes. And yep. uh, and so then I would always listen to hot mixes. Anyway, it's a different, it was so, uh, and I used, they used to make fun of me. And I'm like, I don't care how much you make fun of me. I'm not gonna like that shitty music. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I didn't know that. I like some of Led Zeppelin songs. No, I like some, no, well, I mean, I like some of it, but you know, most of it, I, it's not for me. <laughs> All right, guys, my special guest tonight is Jimmy Dore. He's a comedian and the host of the Jimmy Dore Show. Jimmy, welcome back. I have so much to talk to you about tonight. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's talk. All right. So the first story, there is a big mayor race happening in L.A. And I heard a little bit about it. I have a little a clip here that I'm going to play. Uh, Caruso and Bass are running against each other. My understanding is that Caruso is a billionaire. Apparently he was a Republican yeah. and then he switched to Democrat. Just to run for mayor. Exactly. He was a Republican exactly. up until he wanted to run for mayor. Exactly. And well, he's winning right now. He's in the lead. Yeah, well, he spent $23 million. <sighs> uh, Karen Bass, I think spent 2 million maybe. Uh, so he's, she's getting outspent like 20 to one or something like that. And, uh, so yeah, I mean, the, the guy knows how to make a shopping mall. He made the Grove, which was a real step up. I think for, if you're going to go to a shopping mall, it's an outdoor mall, but you know, I mean, I'm suspicious of guys who are billionaires who then want power in government and makes me think they want to shift stuff around to enrich themselves, you know, which is what almost always is the case. So, uh, I, I, you know, I just, the oligarchs have taken over. They, they, they just, they all run for office now. If they used to be, they would just, they would just fund a guy and that's how they ran things. And yep. it was all, but now it's just, they're the guy. They don't even have to worry about it. Yeah, I'm a billionaire. So what I'm the, it's like, what it, it seems nuts to me, uh, that we put up with it. But, um, <laughs> I, you know, I really think we're Randy Newman has a song. Now I like a guy like Randy Newman and uh, he wrote us. Uh, it's the end of the empire. Mm -hmm. This is this is how this is how empires end. And uh, we're still overextending. We, we little bit people living under every bridge in this city. We got a billionaire running for the head of it and we're yeah. sending 40 40 to 54 billion dollars to the most corrupt country in uh, Europe, Ukraine. You know, hey, 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 can we get that? Can Russia invade California or Los, Los Angeles? So you guys had sent 40 billion here to help fix this place up. That would be fantastic. I know, I know. I have this clip here I'm gonna play for people who are not aware of Caruso and Bass. So here's an update on that race. 
Numbers right now, Rick Caruso and Karen Bass will face off in November. Caruso has 42% of the vote and Congresswoman Karen Bass has 37%, very tight. City Councilman Kevin De Leon is a distant third at 7%. Let's go to Cara in downtown LA with more on this race. Good morning, Cara. Good morning, Rachel. Get ready for five months of intense campaigning as these two candidates try to convince Angelinos each is best suited to tackle LA's biggest problems. Take a look. The front runner in the race by, as you just mentioned, a narrow margin there. Real estate developer Rick Caruso gathered with supporters at the Grove, one of his shopping malls. The 63 year old billionaire has also served as president of the Civilian Police Commission and been on the board of water and power commissioners. His focus reducing homelessness, partly by building more cost effective shelters and units, fighting crime with additions to the LAPD's force, and addressing corruption at City Hall. Caruso spent nearly 41 million on an advertising campaign, much of it his own money. Money. Here's part of what he said last night. 41. Uh, and I'm a little bit confused too because the other thing I was going to ask, he said he wants to fix, I guess, like the homelessness problem. Yeah. Do you think he's actually going to try to do that? I think he's going to try to ship him somewhere else. I don't think he's going to actually try, uh, try to change the conditions that cause that homelessness. Do you think he's going to do that? Doesn't sound no. like it. Sounds like his. He wants to. You know, maybe try to find a way to warehouse them somewhere, and then um, hire more cops. That's his. And if people don't realize, you know, hiring more cops doesn't stop crime. Uh, that's not how you stop crime. I mean, you got to have cops. That's not what I'm saying. I get it. You have to have someone call when someone's breaking in your house, so you can wait for an hour for them to show up, which is how long it took me to get a cop. When I was uh, one time, I had uh, a crazy guy at my house. And I call the cops. It took 45 minutes for them to show up. Oh my God. Yeah, I know. So you see why people, uh, anyway. Uh, so not for uh, any, the, so that's what he's going to do. It sounds like he, according to this, what my if, uh, inference is that he's just going to hire more cops because that's always popular with the people and uh, fill the jails more and try to find a way to hide the homeless instead of actually try to fix it. Well, that's what it sounds like to me. Uh, yes. We'll see. Uh, you know, I have fingers crossed I'm wrong about all of it, but that's what it sounds like. I mean, I, I we got to get some kind of uh, public financing for elections. I mean, that's, you know, how do you fix this stuff? You get you got to get public financing. That's certainly one way. Uh, but I don't think the people who actually run this country are going to allow that to happen. I mean, they just have a strict. We lost our democracy decades and decades ago, and uh, it's gotten to cartoonish. Late. I mean, to it's a cartoon now, isn't it, Savvy, that we literally have I'm, in my city, the Los Angeles, one of the richest cities in the world. There's people living under every bridge and we're sending 40 billion dollars somewhere else. Yeah. I mean, you talk about a corporate captured government. This we don't have a democracy. That's that that whole that the whole thing is that Donald Trump and the uh, the January sixth, they wanted to steal our democracy. Your democracy was stolen a long time ago. And you know who's won every election in my lifetime? Goldman Sachs. Okay, they win no matter who wins. If if Barack Obama won, they won. If John McCain won, they won. And guess what? They gave more money to Barack Obama than they did to John McCain. I'm talking about yep. the Wall Street. So they've won every election and there's no winning and you can't serve Wall Street and also serve workers. It doesn't work. And uh, so anything short of a real, I think, revolution in this country, I'm not saying uh, violent. I'm saying people need to stand up and not take it anymore. And yep. uh, anything short of that, I think we're, we're, st we're just going to keep uh becoming more and more like Brazil, which, you know, a rich and poor, no middle class and uh, a high crime, walled off, uh, gated communities, stuff like that. I think that's, you know, we're, we're, we're a third world country except for a handful of cities. Why do you think more people are choosing to to vote for him? Because I did see that Snoop Snoop Dogg endorsed him. Gwyneth Paltrow endorsed him. Kim Kardashian endorsed him. Do you think that the celebrity influence may have something to do with more people wanting to back Caruso? A hundred percent, of course. Yeah, that's why they, that's why people do it. That's why they seek it. 
Yeah, it makes up certainly raises their profile and uh, in a positive way with those people's fans. Uh, I, you know, I, I, again, I think it's too far gone. I don't really, I, I, I don't know if the system can be fixed. It's just, it's out of control, right? The, the yeah. income inequality is just, is just spiraling out of control. The CARES Act, which was nothing more than the largest upward transfer of wealth in the history of humankind. No one ever talks about it. Bernie Sanders voted for it. Uh, and so did everybody in the Democratic Party, including the squad. And then they voted for and when every Democrat voted for that 40 billion to Ukraine. It's over. It's over. I mean, so uh, what? how do we start over? How do how do don't you think, Sab? I mean, I don't mean to be too pessimistic, but these people who still want to tell you to vote Democrat and somehow we're going to get somewhere. It's kind of a, it's it's worse than a joke now. It's an insult. Well, I think Richard Wolf would say we're living in late stage capitalism. Right. That's it. We're just losing it. Like people are starting to lose it. I think that's why violence is increasing. I think that's why, you know, people are more frustrated. That's why people have checked out politically. Also, we've had bad politicians. They just look out for Wall Street and corporations. That's why people are not feeling Joe Biden. That's why he's doing so bad in the polls, because he's just not doing a good job. And he just cares about himself and he cares about corporations. He doesn't care about the people. Like you said, he chose to send money abroad to another country. He won't even help out the people here. And we have a baby formula short groceries are expensive gas is expensive they're showing you just how much they don't care about you 80 percent of workers live paycheck to paycheck before the pandemic you know yep. uh, so it's it, it doesn't seem like this system can be fixed it's just it just knows one it's just a it's a one-way street and that is to drain the, the treasury of dollars and disperse it to you know the cronies Right. And it's the military industrial complex. I mean, I don't know if you noticed as soon as they got their fifty four billion dollars for Ukraine. Now, Joe Biden and everybody else starting to distance themselves from uh, Zelensky. Right. They're getting ready to they're getting ready to blame everything on him. And uh, <laughs> they're starting to speak uh, negatively about him in public. And uh, so and the people are starting to say, well, even Joe Biden is starting to publicly admit that they're going to have to cede territory to Putin to mm -hmm. have peace, and the peace is going to have to come through diplomacy because there's no way in hell that Ukraine is going to overcome the USSR military. It's it's a joke. It's always been a joke. And the reason why most of the people in America don't know that is because they're the most propagandized country in the world. They have no idea that the news is not the news, that, that the news is straight propaganda from billionaires. Uh, that's a big problem in America. I mean, where do people go to get their information about the L.A. mayor's race? They go to the local news, and the local news is owned by those same guys. It's a, it's a class war. And, you know, they won a long time ago. Agreed. We, they, they, won't even throw, they won't even give us health care in the middle of the pandemic. They can't. It's... Nuts. It's crazy. It's terrible. So this is the candidate running against Caruso. This is Bass. So I'm going to play this clip. It's from 2019 to 2021 and was considered a possible running mate for Joe Biden. Now, before <laughs> holding office, she also founded the nonprofit Community Coalition with the goal of transforming social and economic conditions in South L.A. Last night, she talked about her platform. Los Angeles change is coming and our campaign is leading the way. We're leading the way so we can have a city where one job is enough to make ends meet. We're leading the way to a city that runs on clean, green energy. Leading the way to a city where young people see a future for themselves and their children. And she's losing. So that's that. <laughs> she was considered a possible running mate for Joe Biden. That that that. Yep. Boy, man, that, that doesn't sound good to me. Does that sound good to you? No, no, it doesn't. Well, she was also endorsed before by the Congressional Black Caucus, and we know that they don't really endorse real progressive candidates. They just don't. You can see that with Chantel Brown and Nina Turner. So I, I just feel like, again, like the people don't have a good option between the two. No, that's the, that's the problem, right? So now we got – those are our choices. You want to get – you know, punched with the right fist or get punched with the left fist. It's that, that's, your, that's your choice. Do you think someone should be able to just switch party like that for a race? Yes. 
<laughs> I don't like it, but yes, I think you. I don't think you should be, have to stay in a party if you don't want it. You should be able to free country. You should be able to join a party, quit a party, start a party, whatever you want. All right. So speaking I of mean, parties, um, Bernie Sanders. Oh boy. So I saw this yesterday. Bernie Sanders says he won't primary Biden and would support him if he runs again. So this is Bernie Sanders doing what he does as usual. So it goes on to say, Senator Bernie Sanders, the progressive firebrand and former Democratic presidential candidate, said on Monday he would not challenge President Joe Biden in a 2024 primary and would back him if he runs. A comment that comes as Democrats are uncertain whether the 79-year-old president should run again. I think it's a little too early. I think Biden will probably run again. And if he runs again, I will support him. So again, it's like, this is Bernie Sanders not sticking with his movement again, not holding Joe Biden or Democratic Party accountable. And he's an independent. I want to remind everyone and this is him again caving to Joe Biden. I want to make it clear. I am not going to extract one fucking thing for my vote or my support. Okay? I'm never going to fight for anything. I will never, ever demand that Joe Biden even follow through on a campaign promise, uh, no matter how big of a cuck I look like. It's amazing. <sighs> it's like that, you know, okay, Medicare for all. He ran on the public option. We're, we're, they don't even talk about it. Don't even talk about it. He ran on the public option. He ran on the fifteen dollar minimum wage. It's a joke. He's making a joke out of you. He's making a joke out of the people they're asking for the to vote for them. You know how you get people to vote for you? You actually do something for. Them. They won't do anything for the people, Sammy. They won't do it. Nope. Why not? Why not take a trillion dollars and give it to the people? See what happens. <laughs> it's the craziest thing I've ever, and. You know that again. It's just the the as Chris has as I somebody I heard describe it that way. Like it just the gears uh, uh, have seized up of government. They're so corroded with corruption that they can't even function to get anything to you unless there's a huge profit for some corporation involved. Um, it's I, exactly. I and, and Bernie Sanders will not extract a goddamn thing for his support. He disbanded. He he disbanded his own. He talks about you know. He even now talks about we're going to build a movement. You built a movement and you disbanded it. Yep. You asked them to do nothing. You pressured the establishment in zero ways. You extracted nothing for your movement. Nothing. Well, there's something else I noticed too. He said, I think Biden will probably run again. If he runs again, I will support him. Joe Biden has already announced that he is going to run for 2024. So why do you have people like Bernie Sanders? And by the way, AOC, the other day, they were asking her if she would endorse Joe Biden. And she said, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. She wouldn't give a yes or no as if they don't believe that he is going to run again. But I thought it was interesting that AOC wouldn't give a yes or no but Bernie Sanders has no problem just jumping right out and saying yes. And I feel like AOC with her is theatrics too, by the way. I felt like she didn't want to give an answer because if she said yes, then she'll look bad to her progressive base because the progressives don't want Joe Biden. And if she says no, then she'll disappoint the Democratic Party leadership. I think uh, the donor class is nervous <clears throat> that Trump is going to run again and that Trump will beat Biden because Biden is so unpopular because he's not doing anything for the people. Mm. And so there's already whispers campaigns uh, of, you know, how do we get rid of Joe Biden? So that's already happening. That's already, not only is it happening, it's being printed in the New York times, stuff like that. Um, and so AOC was given the okay to say that. Right. And, um, it, it, she's not crossing anybody, right? Uh, it's not like she, it's a, it's a, uh, so I'm just, I, my, this is my theory. This is all mm -hmm. my theory that um, they're, they're trying to figure out what to do about uh, Demented Joe. And uh, they know if he has to, I mean, he can't, 
he couldn't get through a Jimmy Kimmel interview. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Jimmy Kimmel was like talking to him like you would talk to your 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 great grandfather you're visiting in the home. You know, that's how he was talking to him like, you know, how you talk to a baby, right? Like they're delicate and he's trying to guide him and um so they I mean he can't get through that. I don't I get I don't see uh, how anything it's only going to get worse. So, uh, I, so that's what's happening. So they're trying to figure out what the hell to do. And they, they picked a very unpopular vice president also. Uh, yeah. so, uh, it'll be interesting. I, again, I'm bad at predictions. I would have never predicted the things that have happened in the last two years would have happened. Uh, and I certainly would not have predicted that Bernie Sanders would pledge his, uh, his his support and uh, kind of turn his back on his supporters without uh, his without extracting anything and then uh, continuing to let it happen. I mean, it's just like, what? what why is it only like uh, Republicans get to have people like that fight and put holds on bills and stuff like that? Why is right. it people? Why is it? It's just imagine all the shit Bernie could be doing and stirring it up and, and putting holds on things and. Uh, getting people in the street and, you know, instead of having a fake protest for a moratorium on rents and mortgages, you know, you have a real protest. Wouldn't that amaz be amazing? They had a real protest. You know, it's not a real protest when uh, Chuck Schumer shows up. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And the other thing too, now Chris Hedges brought this up recently. You know, I wish I would have listened to Chris Hedges a long time ago, but I feel like he was right about Bernie Sanders. Like we just did a call in about this. Chris Hedges was saying that Bernie Sanders, I didn't know that Bernie Sanders actually campaigned for Bill Clinton. Yeah. That. So that was a shock to me. He said that and I was like, wait, what? I was like, what if I only would have known? But uh, he said that he feels that Bernie Sanders, basically, he captured the youth and really energized the young people. And then just basically was she parting them into the Democratic Party. So he said the moment Bernie Sanders decided not to leave the DNC 2016 after 2016 and run as an independent or third party, he knew that Bernie Sanders wasn't serious about his movement. Yes, that is correct. And then he predicted how his 2020 campaign would look uh, to a T, mm -hmm. to a T filled with insiders and people from the Center for American Progress. <laughs> I know. I know. No, it's it's just one of those things like i feel like if he's supposed to be an independent how come he doesn't use his independent title whatever you want to call it for some type of leverage for example if the democrats say bernie sanders we want to put you know send 40 billion dollars aid to ukraine why doesn't bernie sanders come back and say okay if you want me to support this bill then you're going to have to bring Medicare for all to the floor for a vote. Why doesn't he do something like that? Why doesn't he use his independent title to get something from the Democratic Party instead of just joining the Democratic Party? Yeah, that would that's the big question, huh? <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> Gee, I mean, I've you know, all I know is how it manifests. It manifests itself in cowardly behavior. That's what it looks like from the outside in. It just looks like he's just a spineless coward who's willing to let himself be uh, used as a tool <coughs> of, uh, at, you know, empire, imperialism, and uh, people like Joe Biden. He's in service to Joe Biden. Guess who Joe Biden's in service to? <laughs> right? He's in service to Wall Street, the military industrial complex, big pharma, health insurance companies, and uh, Silicon Valley, and fossil fuel companies. That's who. That's so now Bernie, if you're Bernie serving. Uh, Joe Biden, which he is, and he's pretty proud to say it. He doesn't, he doesn't, that's not an insult. He he brags. And uh, the most progressive president since FDR. And uh, <laughs> so anyway, I, I it's, it's a, it's a real heartbreak. I don't know how to get uh, through it. I had to actually, uh, I'm trying to drink less because I can't drink, you know, drink, drinking is not a good way to deal deal with problems. <laughs> I mean, for a short term, it works, but it doesn't work long term. But um, yeah, so anyway, uh, I don't know. I, now would be, you know, uh, now would be a time for someone who actually could uh, remind people 
that the issues we're facing right now or convince people that the issues we're facing right now are not left right issues, even though they want you to think everything is a left right issue. It's not. Uh, it's us against them. Right. And people need to realize that, uh, you know, uh, they want you to blame your neighbor. They want you to get right. angry at your neighbor and they want you to blame your neighbor for the pain that you felt over, over a COVID. Uh, yep. Meanwhile, they're out breaking rules and laws and manufacturing the, and, and doing experiments in Wuhan that nobody knew and they shouldn't have done. And then they lied about. And then they lied about that. They knew it, that they probably came from there. And then they lied that they lied about it. And it, it's and so people instead and the, and they still consider that guy who lied about it. Fauci, he was a pathological liar. Uh, <laughs> he, he's a pathological liar, criminal. And uh, he lied. I saw him lie to Congress twice with my own eyes. He lied about it. He fund gained a function research in Wuhan. And of course he did. And uh, he lied. He did it twice. So. So again, but if you lie at the behest of the empire, you're never going to be, there's never a price to pay, right? Just that's why that clapper could lie under oath to Congress that uh, they weren't spying on Americans when he knew that they were, right? And nothing happens to him because he's doing it at the behest of the oligarchy, the people who really pull the strings and run this country, the owner class, the owners, the people who own Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. Why is Chuck Schumer... Uh, one of the most, the least, he has negative charisma. Why is a guy like Chuck Schumer, a guy with negative charisma, how is he the leader of the Senate? You think, you know, and then, and that's the kind of question I would ask myself. And then, <clears throat> of course, you figure out why a guy like John Boehner was the leader. And then you start seeing why someone like Nancy Pelosi is the leader. Nancy Pelosi can barely speak anymore. And she's called the speaker and she's the leader. And I'm like, oh, the, you figured out. They're the ones who are the, the biggest takers of cash from corporations. And so they get the cash. So now Wall Street has picked Chuck Schumer because he's the most pliable, easily controlled guy there. So they give him all the cash and then Chuck Schumer distributes that cash. Same thing with Nancy Pelosi. They look at someone like Nancy Pelosi, who's a hundred millionaire. They they know she's reliable. She's in their class. She's on their team, not the workers. So they give all their cash to Nancy Pelosi. She always brags about what a big fundraiser she is. What that she knows she is, and then she's that's how she gets control, and that's why they vote for her because then Nancy Pelosi gives them cash to go run in their own districts. That's how this works. That's how they get control. And that's why a guy, a jellyfish like Chuck Schumer, who I wouldn't ask directions to the freeway, is somehow the leader of the Democrats in the goddamn Senate. It's because he's the biggest horror there is in the Senate, and he'll take as much cash as possible. Well, one of the things I've started telling people is that when I talk about issues like Medicare for all, universal health care, whatever you want to call it these days, when I talk about canceling student loan debt, when I talk about paid like family leave, I, I'm not going to call those left issues anymore. I'm going to call them class issues. That's right. And I think if we we put it that way, maybe it would get across to to more people because CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, they're going to describe it as this is socialism, which that's not socialism, but. I think if we paint it to people that, listen, this really isn't a left or right thing, because if you're a billionaire, if you're wealthy, do you need Medicare for all? No, you don't. If you're working class and you're poor, you, you probably do, because even a lot of people I know that have health insurance, it doesn't cover everything. It doesn't cover some things. It doesn't, doesn't even cover like mental health. We have people that have mental health issues. They can't even get any type of help because the insurance that they have doesn't cover mental health issues. So I think it's the framing. And I think I mentioned this last night about Bernie Sanders constantly telling people that he was a socialist, which, by the way, he's really not a socialist by definition. And so people saw those issues as, oh, these are scary socialist issues. They're not. If you look at the other countries, you look at Germany, you look at places like Denmark that have universal health care for everyone, that have paid family leave, that have real vacation where like people can take like four weeks off, that have like paid maternity leave. You talk to people in the UK, they're getting like nine months paid uh, maternity leave. Those are not socialist countries. And so I think that by Bernie Sanders continuing to tell people that he's a socialist, which again, by definition, he's not. I think that actually hurt 
some of those policies. I wish he would have described them as, listen, these are class issues. If you're working class, if you're poor, even people who will technically do the inflation now, middle class, all of these issues should matter to you. Yeah, he should. He Well, what what I wish people uh, would do is remind when when people say, oh, that's socialism, I would say we already have socialism for the rich. We yep. already have that. Right. What do you think the CARES Act was? That's socialism for the rich. What do you what do you think uh, depreciation is? Why do you think a guy like Trump didn't have to pay legally not have to pay taxes? Right. Because uh, the, the, the tax code is written by the guys who benefit from the tax code, not you and me. Right. Why does Mitt Romney's that remember that everybody would say Mitt Romney's secretary pay, pays a higher rate than he does. Right. That's right. Because those are the guys who write the tax code, not you and me. Um, uh, yeah, I wish people would remind people. Yes, this is. Uh, you, I would say it's social. We already have socialism. Now I want a little bit for the rest of us, right? And don't think you don't have the money to do it. You do, right? We have enough for a thousand military bases around the uh, globe. Uh, yeah. But you're telling me we don't have enough to fix again. Forty billion dollars that they did in the blink of an eye without any debate could have ended homelessness in America twice over. They could yeah. so they could just do this. And so that's what I'm talking about, how it's worse than people think. The gears have so seized up. They why wouldn't you just also at the same time write a check for 40 million dollars to your own fucking country? Why wouldn't right. you do that? I, it doesn't make any sense to me if they and I say, imagine if they took two billion dollars and gave two billion dollars to each uh, top 20 cities in America. You're right. And spend that forty billion dollars that way, and say, "Here you go. You could. Uh, you need to end homelessness. So you have to build public housing for these people, and and, and everybody gets jobs doing that. That's union jobs, construction. That's concrete. That's uh, uh, carpenters, electrical. That's everything. And uh, and then you and then you also get transportation. You get everything for that. And then you go here, and then the rest, whatever left over, you towards your infrastructure. You have to build, uh, you know, rails or light high, light speed, whatever it is." And uh, it, w it would be amazing for our country. They won't do it. No, <laughs> they won't fucking do it. And and the, the only way they'll fix it. So the only way something gets done is if there's some huge profit for a corporation in it. And uh, they can twist the arm of the legislature to get that done. And that's uh, it's, it's happening every day. It just uh, isn't happening for working people. Working people don't have a lobby. Right. And, you know, even and the problem with the. You know, uh, unions get co-opted, and that's a big problem also. Like, the people who run those unions are in the class of the people they're supposed to be organizing against. Yeah. So, <clears throat> anyway, uh, yeah. I don't... I'll tell you, uh, uh, vo voting voting Democrat is <laughs> not going to get us there. Um, we need more stuff like Christian Smalls. We need more independent media, but they're taking independent media away, um, and they're, they're 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 crushing us, right? Look at how they they're coming at PayPal like they're on a they're on a they're they're deplatforming your way to get uh, revenue, right? And so this is fascism, right? This is what that's what when government and corporations, you know, they and it, who is it? It's anti-war voices. Right. Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh, people who are speaking out against that at the gray zone. They got an email where it was it's clear that's yeah. what happening. It's happening to it happened to, uh, to consortium. Uh, it happened to them. It happened to, I think, Alex McLeod. It's happening. So uh, I took all my money on where well, I'm getting rid of PayPal uh, and I took all my money out and I'm shifting people over to another way. But again, this the other way is probably just as bad. Uh, it's all owned by a billionaire somewhere. Uh, and exactly. that's. Yeah, and that's the you know it's funny when people uh, they they go oh, you, yeah Peter Thiel is invested in Rumble why would you go on Rumble who the fuck do you think is invested in Google who do you think is invested in YouTube who do you think was one of the original investors of Facebook you, you fucking idiots you think there's a you think there's a good uh, major broadcasting corporation out there that's it you know it's just some kind of fantasy. Uh, MSNBC and CNN are just as corrosive for this democracy as Fox News and whatever else you want to point to. Yeah, no, it's true. And I want to show people this is exactly why they don't do anything for us. If you're new, you've, you may not have seen this before, but I put this on the show before. It talks about feudalism then and now, and there's two different comparisons here, medieval feudalism and corporate feudalism. And so you'll see back in the day, 
at the top were the monarchs, then you had landed gentry, clergy, royal ministers, merchants, vassals, and at the bottom was everybody else, peasants, laborers, and conscripts. But if you look at corporate feudalism, at the very top, you have the central bankers, Federal Reserve, Bank of Japan, ECB. Next, you have the big bankers, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Lloyds. Corporate elite follows them, Fortune 500, multinationals. And the elected officials, they're all the way down here. And that includes the president, MPs, representatives. Right. Under them as top bureaucrats, top professionals. And again, at the bottom, that's everyone else. Most of us are down here, workers, yeah. students, and soldiers. So you see, you need to see who is above the elected officials, and then you understand why they don't do anything for the people. That is exactly right. And Barack Obama's entire cabinet was dictated uh, from Citicorp. We know we know their Citigroup. Uh, we knew that because of uh, WikiLeaks and and they, uh, there was an email and every one of those people that Citigroup wanted in Barack Obama's cabinet ended up in Barack Obama's cabinet. That's, again, why Barack Obama got more money when he ran than his Republican opponent. Again, they, they win every election. To think that Barack Obama was any less of a tool than his opponent. He even admitted it. I have it on video. I should play it more in my show where he said, if you look at my policies, my policies would be considered moderate Republican if uh, this was that 1980s. Yep. Well, it's considered that now. Well, yeah, that's just because how much shit, shit has shifted right that mm -hmm. what doing is considered in any way left. It isn't. Just like AOC even admitted before she got indoctrinated into the club that we have two right-wing parties in America. We don't have a left-wing major party. And when you look at this, this explains why Barack Obama chose to bail out Wall Street and not the American people. Remember, we're at the bottom. We're everyone else. <laughs> the, the banks are above him. So, of course, he was going to save them and not save us. So that's important for for people to see. There's one other thing um, I do want to show you as well, Jimmy. Uh, so Rokana was recently on Bad Faith Podcasts. Um, I will say out of all the people in D.C., he seems to be the only one that's willing to go on to independent media. That's not TYT per se. And yeah, I'll give him that. I, you know, it, that. I'll give him that. Yeah. And so I don't know if you're aware of this, but there's a, a Senate race going on in New York State. And Nomiki from Majority Report has decided to run as a candidate but there was already a progressive candidate in that race that was already endorsed by DSA and endorsed by AOC. And she just announced, I think it was like two weeks ago, I think I think it did that, like two or three weeks ago, she announced that she's running in that same district. So now they are going to be splitting the progressive vote. So the 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 joke is we we were the we were told we're the ones that's dividing the left and here you have the same person who was saying that who is physically dividing the left right now. <laughs> Not kidding. Uh yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it's a funny story, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so Rokona came on to Bad Faith and, um, you know, props to Bree because she asked him about that. And I want you to hear his response because I do hear, of course, there's some hypocrisy in his response. So I'm going to play this. You know, the left uh, has been curious about your decision to weigh in on the New York Senate race um, where the DSA endorsed candidate uh, uh. Kristen Gonzalez. Um, has a new challenger in the form of Nomiki Khans, who right. is, you know, herself, uh, you know, embedded in left in the left media world, has previously run for public advocate in New York, and is known uh, to many in this arena. Um, and you know, she was part of a community on the left that was very critical of the force of vote movement, largely because it was considered to be divisive, that it was dividing the left. And now some people are saying that she's doing the same by entering this race where there was a clear progressive candidate. You have endorsed uh, Nomiki Konst, and I will also note, on a personal note, one of the first articles I ever covered for The Intercept was about your endorsement of Joe Crowley over <laughs> AOC back in the day, and then the revised kind of dual endorsement. Dual so endorsement. So what, what has caused you to weigh in this race, and why Nomiki? Yeah, well, for the AOC thing, I'm proud I'm the only member who 
actually did endorse her that race, a dual endorsement by admission, but uh, <laughs> I did, uh, did endorse her, and obviously that turned out to be a, 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 a correct to bet given all that she's contributed. Oh, Namiki, oh, yeah, look, I've known Namiki. Namiki, when I won for Congress, had a tweet that criticized me because I had beaten my conda, and then we actually struck up a conversation and friendship, and uh, both became huge supporters of Bernie Sanders. As you know, she's been a, a, a very strong supporter of Senator Sanders, and I got to know her uh, in my involvement in the Sanders uh, campaign, but also before Sanders, that in calling Sanders, on Senator Sanders to run. Sanders, Sanders, she Sanders, started an organization that was encouraging working mothers uh, to run for office. So I, I don't know her opponents. I, I don't know uh, New York politics, obviously, that well. Uh, and I've heard only good things about her, her opponent. I mean, I'll disrespect her. I've just worked with Nomiki a lot on progressive causes, and particularly in support of Senator Sanders and some of uh, in her work when she was at the Young Turks. And that's why that's why I endorsed her. So basically, he decided to endorse Nomiki over Kristen uh, Gonzalez, who was already the progressive candidate in the race because Nomiki is his friend. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, do, I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing about New York politics. You know, me, my friend, I don't know nothing. I mean, I'm just a guy, you know, I'm just trying to do so. I got a friend, I'm trying to do a solid, you know. I don't know politics. I don't know how this stuff works. I'm real kind of. And I think what he's not realizing here yeah. is, you know, watching these kind of interviews, I know what's coming next. I know what's coming next is going to be, well, why didn't you endorse Nina Turner? And that's exactly what she asked him next. But can you tell me a little bit more about the endorsement process, though, uh, <laughs> Representative Conover? Because it does seem to me, certainly in this space, folks are going to make friends and, and people are going to have personal relationships. But that doesn't necessarily, <laughs> that shouldn't necessarily translate into an endorsement, especially when, for your own admission, you're not particularly engaged and are knowledgeable about what's going on in New York state politics. And there is a candidate in the race that seems to have gotten the endorsement and support of the <laughs> progressives in the state who are very engaged in progressive politics. Isn't one option just to sit this one out? Right. It is, and usually I do sit out in most races uh, in places that I don't know. But they much. really needed me to spend uh, And I don't just time. time. It, exactly. Really, like it, they it really, really yeah. They really needed to undermine this other candidate for some reason. And so they called me in and I'm like, I'm willing to do my part to undermine the progressives. And, uh, you know, this is my first uh, tipping his toe into the water of the Bernie Sanders. Just as I'm willing to let you know, I'll sell out. I mean, what the fuck? I mean, uh, you know, uh, Go ahead. I don't know. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just you have to remember, you know, I, I, I forgot for a while that, you know, it's, these people are real politicians. Ro Khan is a real politician. And let's remember the type right. of people who who are normally drawn to politics. They're usually uh, like me, narcissists and self-centered. <laughs> you know, he, he and it's just I wanted, you know, we all want people like Ro to be better, just like we want people like AOC and the squad to be better. But they're not right. right? They're bull they're at the end of the day, they're politicians and they've revealed themselves to be bullshitters. And, you know, they all voted for the CARES Act and then they hide behind it. Well, they had that unemployment in it. It's just like you can't vote for the largest upward transfer of wealth in the history of it. Did he vote for the 40 billion? Did he vote for that? Yes, he did. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's that's. Uh, and then he called Max Blumenthal freaking Russian. Right. Oh, he works for RT and that's our it's like, no, dude, he's it's just like, oh, you're we're supposed to be better than them. And when when you call yourself a progressive and you pose, it's just a pose for these people. And I think it's just a pose for Ro Khanna. And, you know, um, and it's it's funny to watch. It's like her her questions are so, they're such like when she says, tell me a little bit more about the endorsement. <laughs> It's like, how does she stop from fucking cracking up when she, because she knows what she's doing and I know what she's doing and fucking Ro knows what she's doing too. Right. And so it's, it's hilarious. It's like, I really, it's so, but I'm glad she, you know, she did it. She, and that's the kind of, you know, uh, she can get Ro to say shit. That's fantastic. That's so funny. Tell me a little bit, tell me a little bit more about the fucking. Right. So let's see what he says. I, I want to see. That's great. That's a great way to, to lead into it. That's a great way for her to lead into it. That's great. Let me hear what he says. 
was supporting yeah, you know, so. Pete Buttigieg or whomever in the, <laughs> in the 2020 primary. Um, you know, I, it, it's a it, tough situation, but you work with people <laughs> on the Sanders campaign or other things Sanders, and, Sanders. Uh, and, and other causes and you get you respect them. And it's more an affirmation on an individual uh, than than against. And, you know, by and large, let's just be blunt. I mean, unless you're Barack Obama or Bernie Sanders, maybe in some cases, Elizabeth Warren, obviously Joe Biden, these endorsements don't move that many people. It's more a uh, sense I, I of what, what you stand for. I think the fundamental question is, you know, do you think it's advisable in situations like this? I mean, we all just saw what happened, uh, you know, how difficult it is for left candidates, generally speaking, in these races when they're going up against, you know, centrist candidates that are often backed by big money interests in the Democratic Party. We saw what happened recently with Senator Turner. We saw the efforts that were taken against um, uh, uh, Lee in Philadelphia with uh, a DMFI and APAC and millions of dollars being raised for her opponent. And so when you see a progressive have a campaign with legs on it, like we do here in, in New York, and there is a solidified progressive um, base behind her, one has to beg the question, do you think it's useful for additional progressives to hop in the race and divide what is already a marginal vote in many right. parts of the country? Right. I was proud to support uh, Lee Summers. I'm very proud and endorsed her, supported her, uh, proud to have supported uh, uh, Erica Smith, who didn't quite make it in, in North Carolina, and, and other progressives across the country. When Senator Turner, I supported her the first time. I stayed out of it the second time, which I talked to her. Uh, I thought it was a mistake for uh, the caucus to get involved in that race and had made that clear, and I personally uh, did not. Uh, it's hard against an incumbent, but you can certainly stay out. Uh, and in this case, you know, I wouldn't have gotten involved if it weren't for another strong progressive. I you know Mika thought it's a new district. She thought her experience uh, benefits that. I, I don't think you can say uh, there's only one progressive, right? I mean, even in a presidential election, there are maybe two or three progressives. I think the key is, though, how can you coordinate so that we don't have a situation where the progressives start attacking each other. Well, that's exactly the situation, Ro. That's exactly, exactly what the situation is, Ro. Exactly. I just, it, <sighs> it's painful. It's painful because it's just, it doesn't make any sense. Like you heard him. He said he endorsed Nina Turner the first time. He didn't endorse her the second time. Uh, Bakari Sellers did the same thing. Although we, I think we know, you should not trust Bakari Sellers, but it's just, I'm sorry, but the jig is up. Like everybody can see the game. I think what happened with Nina Turner, I think really opened a lot of people's eyes because it's just, we, we told you that this was going to happen. And then you have someone like Rokana who still says that he's progressive and he's saying, well, I'm going to, you know, back Nomiki because I know her, like she's my friend, but but you're dividing the progressive vote. Why didn't you throw your support behind the candidate that was already in the race that has the endorsement from AOC and for DSA? Why? And, and honestly, and I said this before on the show as well, I think the moment, she should have known this, but the moment that Nomiki found out there was another progressive in that race because she announced it on Majority Report, uh, they seemed to be surprised. Emma didn't realize there was another person on in the race until a caller called into the show and said, what about the other progressive candidate? So Emma announced that she is going to be endorsing the original candidate, the DSA backed candidate. But Nomiki is a part of the majority report show. Sam Cedar has gone on to say he's going to support Nomiki. At this point, I think the right thing to do would be for her to drop out of the race. It doesn't make sense. You have Crowley's cousin is also running in this race. So they're going to split the progressive vote. And this is exactly why the left doesn't win because of things like that. <laughs> it's a funny situation. It's, it's, it's <laughs> this, this, this is ridiculous. Like, I don't understand, but it's funny. <laughs> uh, it's a funny situation. I just think it's, I can't <laughs> wait to see how it, pl how it pl <laughs> plays out. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's it's embarrassing. Don't need, they don't need me to help them destroy themselves. So they're doing a fine job on their own. I'm going to let them do it. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't need to pile on. It's, it's a very funny, everybody sees exactly what's going on, what's happening. And whoo, it's fun. It's funny. 
<laughs> so, Jimmy, uh, Jackson Hinkle was here Friday. He was talking about what happened with him, with PayPal oh. and, and Venmo and all of that. That Believe guy, what the, huh? what the... Whew. Yeah, that guy. You think he'd be able to cure cancer with that hair? How pretty a hair <laughs> he has! God, you gotta. There's got to be some actual other use for that hair. It's so nice. <laughs> um, he yeah, he was on talking about that. Lee Camp has also announced recently on Twitter that they have removed another one of his shows uh, from Spotify. Uh, so right. there's a lot of censorship that's going on and this is why i encourage people to also go of, over to other platforms who knows maybe a moment of time before people come after them as well but you need to like diversify your work basically but at the same time there are forces against you so for example this whole issue which i'll get into this uh later this whole story with matt blumenthal and aaron mate they now have people coming after them, trying to remove them yes. from these, these apps as well, taking down their work. Uh, the, these are the things that people have to deal with, especially people who are speaking out against the war and people who have these, I would say, anti-war voices, right? So they're heavily coming after those people. Nick recently had three Ukraine streams removed from YouTube on RBN. Uh, really? bogus reasons they never really give you like a detailed description of what you did wrong or what you said wrong um so for max blumenthal for example they're saying harassment and bullying i think that's ridiculous uh but they're just constantly coming after like those types of voices uh so if you wanted to know how they were going to do this, how they would have done this when it was WMDs in Iraq, this is how they do it. They're going to go after your funding. They're going to get the platform you're on to take you down. Uh, that's why places like uh, Substack are so valuable right now. Yeah. Uh, I like that you could say it both ways. You could say it's valuable and invaluable. They mean the same thing. I don't know how they do that works, but it does. And the same thing with inflammable and flammable. It means the same one. Anyway, um, so uh i forget what i was talking about now <laughs> oh censorship <laughs> oh censorship uh that's the that's what they that's how they were going to do it that's how they are doing it i got i got afraid because i was doing the same stuff about that guy uh paul right. mason right that guy uh who's working with who shows how he's working with the spooks in in uh, england yeah. and he's got he's oh, so there's a new thing out so max has a new they just uh, took down their video of them talking about him and then they reinstated it and then they pulled it back down on YouTube. Did you know that? And then Apple Podcast also pulled out uh, the podcast where they talked about Paul Mason. This is amazing. This is happening right out in, in the open. And so, but now this guy, Paul Mason, he's from the UK. He got outed in the UK. So everybody now knows uh, that he's this fake lefty. Like he, pre he presented himself as a Corbyn supporter and all this stuff. And here he is, the guy going around trying to censor all the anti-war voices and get, uh, uh, uh he's doing anti-propaganda against, uh, 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 not journalists, but also, uh, professors, right? So he's doing that kind of thing. Uh, so it's good that, uh, Max Blumenthal and the gray zones there to expose guys like that. But they, if they, you know, as soon as we become a real problem, that's what they do. They're going to get rid of you, right? We already saw that the uh, you, Gray Zone revealed that the UK uh, intelligence community was funneling money to YouTubers to make videos that were uh, uh, trying to smear people who they considered uh, questioning the vaccine and COVID narrative. Yeah. That's all. That's that. That Max Blumenthal and Gray Zone already revealed that. So to think that they aren't embedded everywhere is is silly. Of course they are. Of course they wouldn't let the number one uh, platform for social media, which I think is YouTube. I don't think they have, certainly for video uh, and um, in the world. Of course they'd be out there all over it, right? So anyway, um, I, I'm, I hate to be so pessimistic, <laughs> but I just don't see there is no fight in the left. Right. right. And, and uh, they're so easily infiltrated. Uh, I mean, just look, you know, uh, th there's people who have a hard on for the fucking People's Party. The People's Party, the People's Party has no power and no money. You're upset about a group of people who want to start a third party and haven't done it yet. You're, what the fuck? It's the craziest shit. 
It's like, you're, you, could, is, is that not the definition of punching down? They're not even a fucking party yet, and you guys can't stop criticizing them? It's like, who gives a shit what they do? They're nobody. They're nothing. They have no power, nobody in power. They have no money, no nothing. Who cares what they do? Well, I, care about, I care about the powerful. Speaking of, I got one more question for you because I know you got to go. But speaking of People's Party, uh, they sent out an, an email. So I have to ask, and I want to hear it from you. Are you considering running in 2024? So I'm considering it, right? Because the time, I wish there was someone like me running. That, I mean, in a, in a sense that they had the message of don't blame your neighbor. Your neighbor is being oppressed by the same motherfuckers that you are being that is oppressing you right they're on the, the, the same boot that came down during covid on you came down on your neighbor it's not their fault uh it's their it's the oligarchy's fault who by the way have been lying to you and funneling money upward through this covid all the way through it you know just this this just little things like why can't i buy a baseball mitt where there's one guy working at my local sports sporting goods store on the corner, but I can buy one from Amazon when they got a thousand people working inside of a, but you know what I mean? During COVID when it's started. So why was, why was target and Amazon and all those and Walmart, why were they allowed to stay open? But everybody's pizza joint had to, you know what I mean? It's like these, yeah. we didn't, we, and we weren't allowed to have these conversations. And now we find out that it was all, they were lying at every turn. And uh, you know, I just, uh, anyway, so uh, I, I, uh, I hope someone like me, who doesn't deem they, what 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 Christian Smalls did, is what needs to be done, and that's what as soon as you try to do that, they that's what wakes them up. What I mean is, as soon as you organize along class lines, Christian Smalls when when he was on my show, I said you know that. That Amazon warehouse that you organized, that's in Staten Island. Now, did you just do it with the lefty liberals or because it's all there's lots of Trumpers there. There's lots of that Staten Island. I know who lives in Staten Island. And he said, no, I had to I had to organize with all. Of course, that's how you organize. And I've said this since the day I had the Boogaloo boy on my show. And I had the next guy on claim to be the next guy on claim to be a, a union organizer. And I said, what's your message for a guy like that? who's a pro gay, pro LGBTQ, pro Black Lives Matter, anti-war, anti-cop, anti-Trump, but he's a gun nut. What's your message for him? He goes, I don't have a message for that guy. I'm like, well, that's why you're a shitty fucking organizer and nobody ever heard of you. Because that's not <laughs> how you organize. You don't go, hey, who, who hears a Trumper? You're out. Who hears a Boogaloo boy? You're out. Who hears a gun nut? You're out. Who hears a libertarian? You're out. Who hears a proud boy? You're out. Okay, who's left? Now we're going to organize with you. That's not how organizing works. It's the exact opposite. That doesn't scare them. What scares them is when all those people realize they have a common interest, that they have uh, what binds them together is greater than what divides them apart. That is the thing that scares them. And I wish someone would run with this message because the problems we have aren't left right anymore. The majority of people want government to help them with their health care. The majority of people want to end empire and imperialism and invest that money back here. If you ask the people, they want to take that $40 billion and give it to the top 20 cities in America and make them better and end homelessness, they would say yes. These aren't left-right issues. A living wage isn't a left-right issue. Yep. So healthcare is an education. These aren't left-right issues. These are us against them. Censorship isn't a left-right issue. Ending those wars aren't a left-right issue. Uh, investing in our infrastructure instead of bombs isn't a left-right issue. So anyway, that's I wish someone would come along with that message, but they're all, even Bernie Sanders, it's, which is why his campaign was such a failure. He sounded like every other goddamn Democrat. Donald Trump is the most corrupt, sexist, misogynist, blah, 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 racist. Blah, blah. It's like, dude, that's not where it's at. You, they were it was like they were having a contest to see who could hate Trump more. That's not what people were interested in. People were interested in someone doing something for them. People were interested in you calling out the people who control both parties. That's what's attractive. That's because people know it now. 
So I hope someone uh, greater, smarter, and better than me comes along that I can help uh, support in their uh, challenge to try to uh, uh, wake people up to this idea that the thing that really scares the oligarchy is us coming together. And the only thing that's actually going to help us is if we come together along real class lines, left, right, in the center, everything else. And, you know, my message re is reaches a lot of people. You know, when I was when I used to go to George Carlin's shows, I would always marvel at his audience and how diverse it was. You know, there were kids, there were senior citizens, there were guys in suits, there were hippies, there were blacks, there were Mexicans, there were Asian, there was everything at his show. And, you know, because he had that message, it wasn't left, right, it's us against them. He knew that there was an owner class and that they don't give a fuck about you and that they're going to be coming for your social security. He knew all that. Yep. And that's the thing that scares them. And don't forget that. I, I never got more pushback on my show than when I interviewed, interviewed a Boogaloo boy. And that, uh, they can't have that. They can't have people coalescing and organizing around issues. They have to keep us divided and everything. You see how everything gets reported today, it's it's in a way that polarizes people. The COVID, somehow vaccines are now left, right? COVID is now left, right? No. And then, and then if you have a critique of that, they say you're right wing. No, I'm to the left of you. I'm anti-mandate. That's from a left wing perspective. That, that And all you're all right. No, but that's all they have. As soon as you get to the left of the Democratic Party, that's what they say you are. Oh, you say you're all right. No, I'm to the left of you. Anyway, I really appreciate you having me on, Sabby. And um, keep the message is don't get distracted by cultural issues. Don't get distracted by left right issues. Don't get don't let identity politics get you distracted. You know what I said? I said my the, the joke I used to do in my act is if it was 1860, the Democrats would be bragging about their first transgendered slave owner. Yep. That's how identity politics are used to keep you down. So don't fall for it. Don't take the bait and uh, organize along class lines. Okay. Thank you, Savvy. Thanks, Jimmy.